Okay, hello everybody. I'll do one more. Uh, I didn't plan on doing one, but when I'm out here at the beach, it's so pretty. I like y'all to see the nice view. I actually uh, uh, did some of my roof earlier. I still have tar on me. So today was like going to be a rest day, and I wanted to do a lot. But uh, this is beautiful North Beach, Lexington. I didn't realize uh, as I was speaking on the, you know, how I do the rollouts, those that are familiar with us. But um, Bob Mueller, I just, I caught something on the news. I'll try to listen to it, but I don't want to sit in the car listening to the news. But supposedly the L.A. Times just did a critique of the man Bob Mueller that I mentioned on the other video. I just read the whole article. I'll try to link it. I wasn't going to do any more, but now I'll link that. <laughs> it seems like he's uh, not just incompetent, but uh, I learned a little bit more of his history. He was appointed Bob Mueller. I understand it's not an FBI investigation. Bob Mueller was the former head of the FBI, and he's now called a special prosecutor. Basically, oh, there goes a... Uh, jet ski. So, but either way, it sounds good to say the FBI investigation. So I read the whole article, and it is critical of him. Basically, it gave his history, his career. I could care less about his. He was like with John Kerry. Uh, they both uh, went to school together and all, and either way. But he had a few high-profile cases, which he botched terribly. I mentioned a few weeks ago uh, one of the cases in Texas. It's along the same lines, though. I talked about the cases where they're trying the Bandito gang and uh, for a Waco shooting and how there was a lot of, you know, things that were hid by the cops and prosecutors in that. Well, Mueller himself had a famous Hells Angels case that he tried he charged them with racketeering, all types of things. I think initially there were 18 defendants in the Hells Angels case. Then he lost and then went back. Then he convicted, maybe got a conviction on five Hells Angels. Then every one of them were overturned. So, and, and then I read the article and said basically he used false witnesses, people that were like paid off to be false witnesses. And this man now with a history like that, you would think he would not even be in any official capacity at all. Okay, then he was appointed, Mr. Mueller, was appointed a week before 9-11. I knew he was the FBI director during the tragic 9-11 at the towers. I didn't know it was just a week before. But then it explained this article how also, a lot of criticism of the man. I'm familiar with the anthrax cases. He was also the head of the FBI where they tremendously botched the investigation into the anthrax cases. If those that remember, I remember it well, because it affected our jobs at the fire department to the point where it was ridiculous, meaning this. After 9-11, then the next one of the like really high profile things you saw in the media a lot were uh, the nine uh, the ant people having either anthrax like the powder white powder chemical in envelopes and so forth. Some were legitimate things, but then people would do phony things. Well, so as a first responder at the fire department, uh, you know we had special things after 9/11 that. Uh, certain procedures changed. We were much more careful on various things. But then we started having people call us that they saw white powder or there was an envelope somewhere. Now, what we did, we responded rightfully. We had no anthrax case in the city of Kingsville. But anything that had any, and I remember sometimes, oh, somebody, some lady saw something on the ground. It could have been sweet and low or sugar. And then we'd go out, and it was, and then we were hosing down everybody. I remember at one incident, you know, I would go in my regular T-shirt, because, and then, uh, oh no, John went into the hot zone without his special equipment, and then, oh, so I got hosed down. 
it was really a big thing. But at the firehouse, whenever we had a call, then we even had a special uh, response unit just for like terrorist attack type thing. So whenever there was a call for anything, and we had the anthrax calls besides the B runs that we used to do. Well, Bob Mueller, he was in charge of the FBI, and he himself personally would take control of the anthrax investigation. I think he's a just man. I remember this case because I've just seen it over the years. Well, he targeted an innocent man by the name of Steve Stephen Hatfell. There are documentaries on this. He it came out in the public, you know, leaking that Hatfill was the target. It was a very long, you know, seven, eight year investigation. Hatfill was not the man. But they say Mueller, when he begins to go after somebody, this is the LA Times, that he don't care. I'm gonna get you and that's my job. Seems like unjust man, according to this critique by the LA Times. Seems like not honorable man at all, according to the LA Times. Hatfield eventually sued, he was innocent. And the government paid him like six million dollars. And that was all the debacle of, of, of Bob Mueller. Then the, another man later was identified. Hatfield had no connection with the anthrax at all as a working with scientists and government. There was another man, I believe the other man was Bruce Ivans. Finally, the real man was starting, they were closing in on him, and he committed suicide. So that kind of never was solved. And then the article said, instead of Mueller kind of like admitting it, that he blamed, put the blame on other people and all. And this is the man. Now, the thing that also upset me, I wasn't going to talk anymore about that particular case, but there was a man that Trump had uh, on his, in his cabinet, and all, uh, General Flynn, if you remember. Well, Flynn since resigned, but he's one of the targets of the Mueller investigation on the Russian collusion. I also read a couple of articles in the heard the last week that uh, Bob Mueller is targeting Flynn's son. Now, there might be certain things in the families that you can go after them, but supposedly it's like a threat. We're going to get your son, Mr. Flynn, and if you don't cooperate with us, we're going to go after your kids, your family. Now, let me say something. I understand, like, it, normally if you're looking for a high target, in this case, more than likely, uh, Flynn, it says, stop, his lawyers stopped cooperating with Trump's lawyers about a week ago. More than likely because of that reason. That Mueller said, now we got something on your son, we got something on your family, this and that. I don't like, according to the LA Times, this man uh, has a terrible record. And look, the Hells Angels, if they were guilty of certain things, but every one of them out of 18 and the five that he finally got convictions on because of false, they called them snitches, jailhouse snitches. They all lied, and I read some of the other lawyers' comments on it. They said it was obvious that uh, Mueller used people that were lying to get. So this is your great justice in your country. This man now targeting families, going after the sons. Good. You're doing a great job. What a just man. I didn't realize his history was that bad how he made it even into the FBI as the head of the FBI. Now, uh, just I'm doing this really so you get the nice little view, so this will be the last one for today. <laughs> uh, I did check on my phone, I was Googling the news, because I didn't check it earlier. Uh, you had a local girl, a local lady, uh, they found somebody dead in her house, and she's now the suspect, so I forget the name, Carla maybe or something. That was kind of maybe the big news. Uh, I didn't see a whole lot of other local issues to deal with. Uh, this little rollout today will also be kind of like a task for my some of the other sites, things that I'm posting on. Uh, the teaching that's coming up, this will be like a little review as well. I did the Sunday teaching, which you see as called Sunday Sermon. I covered a lot. We did that uh, yesterday. I'm going to 
finished the King's uh, Steady, which is still, we got some chapters left in that. And uh, we, we're beginning Ephesians. I was going to review that today, but I really didn't get a chance. So coming up, if you want those that are following, you kind of uh, could review some of those little things. I notice sometimes, it, it, right now one of the other news things, by the way, is what we call net neutrality. I'm for keeping the law the way it is. Uh, most conservative people are against it. Net neutrality was basically, under the Obama administration, the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, decided, the critics said they decided to regulate the Internet. But the people that were for it, and I think it's good to have it, uh, wanted it simply because the Internet is not obviously regulated that much over the last years until net neutrality came out. But big uh, providers, Comcast and others, that provide the actual uh, services that we get and where we utilize websites and these types of things, they could slow down sites and uh, possibly charge for various packages or whatever. I like the net neutrality. Trump, of course, the person he put in as the head of the uh, FCC said that he was going to try to do away with it, and I'm sure there'll be legal challenges, but the net neutrality, in short, is something for us that's a good thing, that we have that particular rule or law governing the Internet. If they do away with it, I think things will still function, but it's better, I think, if we kept that. Because what we have in, in our society, through these mediums that you see, Internet and Google and all, and I'll, I'll mention I have seen times where I think, you know, I, I've seen bias. I don't know if it's done personally, like on some of my sites I mentioned earlier. People have told me, John, we watch a lot of videos It says only one view. I don't really care. Uh, but the point is, we want it to be, uh, we want it to people have that forum that they could be educated on things. The other little news, it's just not a big thing, but the problem we've had, regardless of your political view, is some of the judges now in this country, cases that have been whatever, maybe Trump does a particular thing, which really is in his certain decisions he made, that were permitted. They should have never been challenged in court. Now what you're having is just about everything is being challenged. Things that you would never really challenge. And really the question for people that are like Jonathan Turley, constitutional lawyers. I believe Obama was a constitutional lawyer. There's a question now, a real question for people that think about these things, uh, between the separation of these three branches, right, of government. And the courts play a role, obviously. The executive branch, president, and Congress. But the courts seem to be, if, if you now can challenge almost just about anything and take it to some judge, and the judge can rule even a presidential order. And the thing about this uh, financial consumer, that there was an agency that was developed after we had the terrible financial somewhat of a collapse years ago and then they, there was a law created called Dodd-Frank and this financing law and then there was an agency called the fin Consumer Financial Protection Agency. Okay, Dodd-Frank, that's a whole other story. But that agency had a particular person in charge who was no longer in charge and then some lady uh, assistant that uh, assistant she was going to maybe like be the next lady to be in charge and trump his key uh, he's appointing uh, another person mick mulvaney i believe now trump has every right under federal law to appoint whoever he wants in that particular uh, congress always has to approve these appointments well the lady that kind of wants the job i forget her name now she's suing she was kind of in there as like a temporary, temporary captain. 
temporary head of the Consumer Financial. All right, she's now challenging, and I heard a little bit of the challenge, and that now she, legally the president has the right to appoint whoever he wants to these agencies, federal agencies. He makes the appointment. That, that should never be challenged. Not only did this lady challenge it, she also, in her legal argument, this just came out, she's filed a lawsuit against Trump. She said, not only am I supposed to be the one, and she's making the argument about, it's, it deals with the Dodd-Frank, that's why I mentioned that. She said, but also, I don't want him to appoint anybody else. Now, this is ridiculous. The point I'm simply making, regardless if you're a liberal or a uh, conservative, you're now having people, even in anything like that, uh, yes, in society, if you feel like maybe you got stepped over for a position you should have got promoted, maybe there was bias against you because of your race or your gender, yes, of course you have the right. But this has really have nothing to do with that. This has to do with the, the, the president, if his view, which is negative, I'll grant it, of the Consumer Financial Protection Agency, he's got more of the conservative view that he didn't like the extra regulation on banking. But he has the right to do that. So you have uh, a special prosecutor who went after an innocent man by the name of Stephen Hatfield, who they, they destroyed that man's life. There's documentaries on it. He also went after the Hells Angels, and there were going to be 18 that he brought to trial. Then he couldn't get a conviction on any of those. Then he got five with the uh, snitches that were lying. And every one of the five that he got convicted under shady ways got overturned. And then the same man is now the chief special prosecutor, the chief law person in this country, now going after President Donald Trump. I don't care if you like Trump or not. It's just a disgrace the way all this has worked out. And the reason General Flynn, there's various reports, the same guy by the name of Mueller said, basically said, look, I'm going to get your son, General Flynn. We'll have your, your family in prison so fast, we'll go after every one of you. And then I read all of the little comments in this LA Times article by people that worked with him. Other people that worked in the various stages of his career as lawyer and various, he's a veteran, I get all that. They said, no, he's the type of guy that he wants to tell you what to do, whether it's right or wrong. He tells you what to do. He doesn't care. And this is the same guy that uh, is now saying, family members, sons and daughters, whether it's Trump's sons or son-in-law, he's, he's saying, now, look, we're going to get this one. We're going to get your daughter. We're going to get you. He did that with Flynn. Should have had another job and, and so there's enough that you, you could say maybe there would be charges that they would look at that man in the sense of uh, it seems like the, that LA Times article says <laughs> okay so beautiful sailboat I gave you a little brief nice pretty view of the uh, North Beach today and the Lexington <laughs> and when when you see me upset, and many of you have, I'm upset that uh, many of the actions that have gone on, wars, things of that nature, I look at, I was critical of Bush. You know, I, I see these things on the wounded warriors, and then I see the commercials, our men and our women that lost limbs, died. They're all heroes to me, but what upsets me is some of those actions were unjustified. The wars, they were political actions. The one with George Bush, the second, George W. Bush, and then it led to disasters, actions made on false intelligence. And then we have so, such a so-called high standard, one of the uh, arrests, charges, was in the whole thing I'm talking about was, well, you can't lie to an FBI agent because lying is a crime. But yet as a country, we could lie to the whole world 
and say, oh, somebody has weapons of mass destruction, and we're going to go in, and this war is going to be so ongoing that it leads to the devastation of lives, and some of your kids were killed, some of your families lost arms and legs. And as a country, oh, but we're allowed to lie to the world in some of these actions. That's not considered a crime. Lies that led to the devastation of uh, societies. Iraq, it, it, it's a disaster over there. This led to the whole rise of ISIS, the invasion of Iraq by George W. Bush, which is based on a total lie. It's false intelligence. The same, actually, the British false intelligence had it that fits with the other stuff. But it, it's deemed if you would lie to an FBI agent, though you could use snitches that are lying in your own cases, but it's deemed now oh, we have such a high standard. People deceive themselves. You say, oh, are some of these people that are involved in all these things, are they involved in sexual harassment? And uh, Let me say, even in the sight of God, maybe you're not guilty of the, uh, sexual harassment, no, but those of you that are living sleeping, having sex outside of marriage. That's considered, uh, that's considered in the sight of God a sin. You say, oh yes, but with our country, we've got a free country, John. Many of us in these positions, we break that one all the time. But to lie to a official, we deem that worthy of, you know. Because some of these things are simple. One of the guys that was uh, arrested in the Trump thing, that's it. That's it. He lied to an FBI agent. You know, I've got videos that I talked about how uh, when some of these people in authority are undercover, they present themselves. I didn't even know if I was going to post that one. I remembered it. It was called a mountain climber. As I'm posting these other videos at night, I don't remember everything on those videos. And I'm trying not to share all the real hard ones. I'm trying to skip over them. But I don't know from the little titles I have. But I saw one and I remembered it. I might post it now that I'm mentioning it. But it was simply some guy that showed up like undercover. I'm sure he was undercover. And he would hang out at the homeless mission. I'll post it later, Mountain Climber, if I remember. You could just search on my YouTube. A million hits. <laughs> so he would come up to the mission a few years ago. And he always had the little mountain climbing pack, you know, and just showing up. And he seemed okay, and but he just, and you know, anybody that's new, the guys know me, because I've been around for a long time, anybody that shows up new, everybody thinks, look, this person might be an ARC, undercover, whatever, you want to hang out. But you don't, you know, I don't particularly like people that fake it like that. I, I don't like that, because you're faking it, you're making up stories about you say, but that's part of my job. Do you think God gives you a pass for lying because it's part of your job? <laughs> People don't think. So anyway, he had this, he went by the name, I think, Josh. And so I'd be at the mission talking and he'd be there. And I forgot once. So sometimes I could tell that maybe they're looking for things. There's nothing to find with me. <laughs> Like the guy, one time I went up there for this, a new guy, never seen him, he's gone. He was there not too long. But this was one time, about a year ago, at the mission, Timmons. And then he's sitting next to us, and I don't talk to, you know, I'm nice to the guys I know. But new people, I... And then somehow he brings up, hey, has anybody ever watched The Sopranos? Does anybody know anything about the mafia in New Jersey? <laughs> no, I'm from New Jersey. So after that, so off the cuff, like, oh, John's from New Albert Hoffman said, John's from New Jersey. Oh, really? But the mountain climber was some guy that was just hanging out. If he was undercover, then he lived his life as a lie. Because he just presented himself being on the street. He said, he told, he, I remember the conversations. He's going on this hiking trail. And he's going to, one of the famous ones, I forget which one. And he's talking to me, man, I'm going to be picking up a lot of women, screwing the shit out of these women. Now, and I'm thinking to myself, whether he was undercover or not, I don't go along with that language. I said, well, if that's your thing, brother. But just imagine if you is a cop, just out there during the day. That's my job. 
lying about how we were screwing all these women on this mountain trail. But then the reason I knew it, because one day, I won't even mention it, he was gone for like months and months and months and months. And I'd had some little altercation. It wasn't illegal. But it was with uh, an officer. It was with the eternal affairs person I went to speak to one day. And he knew I was upset. Sure enough, as soon as I got to Timmins, right after that little incident, the mountain climber who was gone for maybe a year showed up right after and, and walked up with his mountain climbing pack and said, oh, I just tracked the miles. I went to Oregon. I didn't say nothing. I was sitting with Lance. And then he walked to, up to where I was sitting with Lance. Just got back after the year absence. Living a lie, telling everybody about a fake persona that you carry. Because you think that's a good job to lie. So I didn't say a word. And Lance is right next to me. And he's kind of talking, just showed up after the year missing. Now, if he was really a mountain climber and was left for a year, do you think he would have stayed? He, I sat, sat next to Lance for ten, five minutes, and he's trying to talk. I didn't say a word, I just looked at him. He left, never came back. Now, what homeless mountain climber that wants to be back in the bluff would have been gone for a whole year, showed up that instant, and I didn't say a word to him, I just looked at him, he left, never came back. He was someone who's living a lie, uh, purporting himself to be whatever he is, whether it's the snitches that the Mueller used for the Hells Angels thing that all got overturned. I don't see any of that as, I don't see any of that lifestyle as just or righteous. <laughs> talking about he was going to go sleep with all those women, all those young girls that he was talking. That's how he was talking. And you're getting paid by a, as a law enforcement agency? Why don't you speak truth? Why don't you live your life in truth? All right, so you get the view. I went a little long. That's the pretty uh, Ferris wheel. I do like that Ferris wheel, okay? So, just, I don't know when I'm going to title this one.